what is up guys so I'm gonna be showing you how to download Yu-Gi-Oh Pro now a lot of you guys I've mentioned you know Yu-Gi-Oh Pro is down doesn't work there's no official download now there is still an official download it's just via the discord server um, I'll link everything down below in the description box if you guys want to uh, get the links yourself so yes on the official site you can no longer download it but you can download it through discord now you can download discord it's a service similar to Skype but uh, you don't have to download it you can just go ahead and click connect and what it's gonna do it's gonna go ahead and open Open up this page over here it's gonna send you over here you don't need to make an account or anything um, you can make one but uh, nonetheless you don't have to make one to like ask for a username but you're really here just to go ahead and get the download um, so anyways it's gonna send you here as soon as you click on this connect it's gonna take a few seconds but uh, if you already have discord you should be familiar with it anyways but uh, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go down uh, to the links over here I'd post these links but the thing is if they update these links it's just better to go to the discord server anyways so these ones will always be the most recent one now I do want to mention that there are a few notes here um, you do have to have Mac 10.8 or higher if you want to download on Mac now I also will be showing you guys uh, a setting to actually increase the speed of the game if you guys are getting any lag issues with the game this setting can actually help you but let's go ahead and just go over the download first and I'll explain some of the things that you can do and the application and I'll give you guys like a brief little tutorial of the application itself so anyways go ahead and download the correct version uh, whether you want to download on Android or the iOS uh, certain version or uh, whatever the case may be or you can just go ahead and click on the Mediafire EXE um, but uh, anyways once you go ahead and download that EXE you're gonna go ahead and open it up now once you go ahead and open it up and install it I already have mine installed here I'm not gonna sit through it and uh, reinstall the game itself but it's really straightforward you just it just asks you where you'd like to install it now after you install it you go to that location you'll see that you have all these little folders and all these other things over here now what you're gonna want to do is uh, first off you're gonna go ahead and open up the Yu-Gi-Oh Pro VS. So you double click on that, it's gonna have an update and it's gonna update with all of the card images. Now, um, after you go ahead and do that, I do wanna actually go over this thing in the system config file. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and right click on it, or if you're on Mac, you know, you can obviously have, it's gonna be a little bit different. You can open this up in Notepad or a lot of different other things, but uh, for the sake of this video, we're gonna go ahead and do this in Notepad. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And then what you actually want to do is make sure that you guys copy these settings. Well, you, d you don't need to copy the nickname. The settings that you want to actually copy are going to be these ones right here. Um, those are the settings. That it should come out as English, but just make sure that these are the correct settings. Um, that the D3D is on one and the skin is at one. The anti-alias is actually something you can you can mess with, but uh, make sure that these both are number one. This this has to do with. Um, what can cause the game to lag for some of you guys so this can help some of you guys out on that but if you guys install it you guys have no problems don't worry about that but if you're getting lag issues just change these to one this uh you might want to lower it i this is the highest setting by the way uh the reason why i have it on the highest setting is because i have uh hd uh pictures in mine and it makes it look nicer for my videos now you don't have to do that and i'll update you guys on how to actually customize your own cards in the future but i just want to go ahead and go over that because some of you guys have said my game lags how do i fix this now, once you go ahead and open up the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro VS, this is what the menu looks like. Oh, by the way, all this is 100% free. I should have like mentioned that earlier on, but yes, the game is 100% free. You don't have to pay for anything. All the updates are free. This is literally one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, clients. This uh, is Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. There's also Dev Pro. So if one doesn't work, you can try out the other one. I'll update you guys uh, with a video on that in the future. But uh, yeah, so this is the main menu. So you have the online land mode, AI mode. Puzzle mode, watch replay, deck edit, and exit. So let's go ahead and just go over like a brief rundown and I'll kind of explain some of the things for you guys, for some of you guys that might be newer. So let's just go from the top to the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and just click online and you can see over on the top left, let me actually swap overlays real quick. Uh, so I can move the cam over. Uh, so anyways, so you have your your uh, nickname and then you obviously have your password and there's ranked and unranked but uh, there's there's multiple servers so if you want to play people in the EU you just go ahead and obviously select that or the Yu-Gi-Oh Pro USA so we're gonna go ahead and just for the sake of this video we're gonna select USA and you can see these are the rooms so all you have to do if you want to play is you just go ahead and make sure you have uh, a deck ready you just go ahead and click join and this is gonna go ahead and join you click this to start the duel and if you just want to spectate you can click over here and it'll go to spectate now this is the, the deck that I'm selecting 
Uh, and if I want to duel, I just go to duel. But I'm just going to sit here and spectate, and hopefully they will start this really soon, so I can show you guys uh, how it looks like from a spectator's point of view if this guy starts it up. Uh, sometimes people will sit here in a lobby and they'll just take forever, so if they take too long, you can just go ahead and leave. There's, it's not a big deal. You don't like lose any. Okay, so there are errors at times in this game. That's just relevant. Um, let me go ahead and actually show you the uh, like overview of the like field, because I want to see... Oh, game already started. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and join let me go ahead and refresh this because a lot of the games they go relatively quick um, so I'm gonna go ahead and spectate this so uh, again if we wanted to select the deck that's where we would select it now over here you won't be able to see the cards in uh, the people's hands because uh, I'm not dueling I'm just spectating that would be kind of a way for me to cheat but uh, anyways so here's what the field looks like so you obviously have the pendulum zones here you have the extra deck your hand is right here and you have the uh, main deck, uh, which you draw from. And if you mouse over the card, you can see what the card uh, does. And uh, you can also go into the card uh, over here to read the actual text. Uh, this text might be a little bit blurry for you guys. Again, I'll update you guys on how to make everything look HD, but I don't want to overwhelm any of you guys with this simple tutorial and overview of the game. Then you also have this thing called log. So you can go ahead and expand the log if you want. But what it's going to help you do is if certain things are activated, you can actually read the, the card's name and then you can use it as a log. And then you obviously have your chat log over here and then you have your setting. Now auto card placing is the thing that makes it so it places the card uh, like it's always going to when you first summon a monster it's always going to go in the middle. Now some cards rely on being in the same column and they're not really meta but there are cards that do exist like that. So what you want to do is if you're running some of those uncheck auto card placing and do not check in random card placing. Um, a lot of people put in random card placing uh, just because they just want it to be like that. But uh, visually, I do like things in the middle, so it, it, on default, it's like that. And then you have your options for no delay for chain and then high chain buttons. You can mute your opponent, you can mute spectators, you can mute the sound effects, and you obviously can enable or disable the music. So those are the settings that are um, there. And while you're dueling, you'll see over here, it, instead, it'll say surrender if you're actually playing. But again, if you were to play, you would see your hand. And everything is done automated. It's not like Dueling Network where you have to manually do everything. Like if I was to uh, activate a glow bulbs of effect uh, to special summon it, uh, it, I would click on activate from the graveyard and it would just special summon the card. I wouldn't have to do anything else. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this duel, but uh, it's pretty straightforward if you've played any Yu-Gi-Oh game uh, and uh, everything is done automatically. Like It's just like the video games uh, that you would play on your console. But anyways, let's go ahead and go back to the main menu. So here we have the land mode. So 99% of you guys won't ever use this. But uh, you do have the option for a land mode in the game, so uh, that's just that's just there as an option. Um, most of you guys won't. Okay, land is local area network, so basically, if you have like a crossover cable, if you're using a like a uh, a router, you can technically play the game with another person on another computer, even though you don't have internet access. That's what it's there for. Now, there's also AI mode. It says it's in beta, but um, anyways. Uh, it's just like dueling a AI. You can set up the things to test certain things. If you want to test Exodia stuff, I really recommend you guys to test it in AI. Or if you're doing any FTKs, I also recommend you guys to do this in the AI mode. The reason why I recommend you guys to do it in AI mode is because a lot of people will quit if you play Exodia in Unranked. Uh, they'll just be like, okay, this is dumb, I'm just going to leave. So if you want to test out any FTKs or a lot of crazy stuff, this is a really good way to do it without making it so your opponent will just quit. Because sometimes if you just sit there with one day at peace, upstar goblin, you activate another card that draws to search, and it just takes too long. Some people are impatient and they will leave the game. So this is an excellent way to do this. So you can see over here, I can make my opponent play anything. Let's, we, we'll just go in um, real quick. So you guys can see in the very beginning of a duel, uh, you have the option for rock, paper, and scissors, and uh, whoever wins this gets to decide who goes first or second. Uh, going second obviously allows you to attack first, uh, and um, the player that goes first only starts out with five cards. But you can see over here, um, everything, access to uh, literally everything that you'd want is here, and you can see over here, you can see the chat log. Uh, well, this is just the, um, here. here we go, here's the actual, like, um, reading of like some of the stuff in the log because sometimes you can't see the card well you can click on view and then you can read the card from here but uh, sometimes it's faster to go ahead and go in here especially when the card has like 50 attachments you gotta scroll over or something like that uh, but it does definitely help out now you can see if there's any traps I just go ahead and click set and it's gonna go ahead and set the card and if I was to go to battle face um, I guess I can special summon this for the sake of actually doing it so I go ahead and discard a card and then I can go ahead and summon it 
and then I can activate that effect, and you can see everything again is done automatically. Now I know it's not smart for me to attack with a 2000 and a 23, but I'm going to do it for the sake of, you know, showing you guys how the attack works and this. But uh, anyways, you can see I have an extra deck over here. If I want to view any of the cards, I can just go ahead and click on view. If I want to view my graveyard, I can go ahead and click view. Now you can't just view your deck. Like in Duel Network, I know you can do that. that. That would be essentially cheating. But let me go ahead and show you how the battle phase looks like. So you just go ahead and click on battle phase. Now, when you want to attack, you have to click once and then you click on attack and then it's going to ask you what you want to attack. Now, some cards can attack directly uh, and it will ask you if you want to do that. But I'm just going to show you for the sake of showing you uh, how it works. So you know, my monster dies, I can go to main phase two. If I had anything else that I can set or activate, I can go ahead and do so. But uh, I don't really want to sit here and do a full duel for you guys. I just want to show you guys like a brief like rundown of it. So he's going to activate a card effect. Now I can activate a card in response to this. So I can activate something like Eternal Soul. I can activate Magician Navigation. Uh, it lets me chain. Now if I don't want to enable this, um, you can actually hold down a key. The key is the letter A as an apple. If you want to set it up so it does not ask you if you want to chain anything and you want to manually do it, you can do it like that. It does save some time, but overall I find it much better to do this. It only takes like half a second anyways. I recommend most of you guys to keep the uh, chain thing on. But anyways, he's activating a card effect. You can see over here I can just activate like Eternal Soul over here. And I can activate the effect and then I can just summon a Dark Magician. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And again, it does everything automatically, which is definitely something that I like. Now, he's playing a much more meta deck, uh, but I don't think there's really anything I need to show you in the mid game. Um, he's activating that effect. Oh, that's totally fine. And so we can go ahead and uh, so I'm trying to make sure I'm not like missing out on anything. So he's going to summon the Crush Wyvern. I don't really care about that. So he's going to go ahead and equip another card. He's going to transmodify. That card, unfortunately, wouldn't completely destroy me. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, at the moment, only has... Um, he has the C, oh, okay, so he's going to activate those cards effects, and he's going to be able to uh, add another one, but uh, overall, oh, he's going to summon that, and then he's going to go ahead and instant fusion, and at this point, uh, it's probably rip for us, uh, because he can obviously get rid of most of the stuff on my board, so you can see that AI is actually really good, um, and you can mess around with that, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, not looking too good for me because uh, his deck is again much more meta, but uh, AI too strong for me. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and surrender here and show you guys the like other options and show you guys the brief rundown of how a lot of the other things work. Now the puzzle mode is really cool. It's like a single player mode where you basically have to win uh, this turn. And there's a lot of these puzzles that are really cool. I highly recommend you guys to try out some of them. I, I don't know the solutions to all of them. And one of these days we should kind of go over some of them because they are really fun. So here's one where it says you have to win this turn. So this guy's got a uh, Crystal Feast card and a Blue-Eyes White Dragon, and we have to simply win this turn. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we got. We got uh, Special on a Fairy type monster from your hand during the month. Uh, that monster's attack is half, but is destroyed during the end phase. So let's go ahead and activate this. We'll go ahead and Special Summon. Um, let's see, what I get some... Oh, I'm not going to really read the effect. I'm not going to try to complete the puzzle here, but I'm just going to show you guys like a brief little example of this. And um, go ahead and special summon this. I'm pretty. This is definitely not the solution to the puzzle, though. Like, uh, by all means, uh, don't 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 do this and think that you're actually going to get any of this. So we can actually activate this. Summon a banished fairy over here, and then um, I'm guessing we were supposed to uh, use infernal reckless summon on some type of target. Now, again, we didn't like solve the puzzle, but you guys get the idea. It's it's a, it's like a single player experience where it's like a puzzle and you try to figure it out. So that's what that option is. Now let's go ahead and go, well, there's also replays. After you finish a duel, it'll ask you if you want to save the replay. And you can see I have some replays over here. And uh, you can send these to your friends. You guys can totally share them. I have a video actually showing this off already. So I'll link it down below if you guys want to watch that video. It's actually on my uh, older channel. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, it's the, the information is still the same uh, as far as copying the YRP file. So you can send these to your friends. Now, if any of these videos error out, like the replays error out, it's because the card actually got changed. Uh, either the card effect can completely change. Sometimes the art work of the card can change. There's a lot of things that can change in the card, and that's what actually causes the replays to not work properly. But uh, anyways, yeah, it's just going to go ahead and play the replay, and you can click pause, you can swap. So what swap means, it means that like it's going to swap the player in the front and the back. So like if you want to watch the, from the uh, point of view of the Ancient Gear player, you can go ahead and do so. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just exit here, because there's really nothing else uh, to be shown off here. Again, you can pause everything if you want to, like, but wait, wait, what's that card? You want to read it? And with, with the replays, though, you can view the deck, and you can see what they would draw into. So one thing that a lot of people like to do 
is if you lose the game and you're like, well, what was my next two draws? So you can go ahead and you say surrender or whatever, and then you could view in the replay what your next draw two draws would have been had they not have OTK'd you or FTK'd you or whatever the case may be. So that can help for play testing as well. You can be like, well, I don't. It doesn't really matter if I lost that duel because my next card would have won, but it just he happened to have game. You know, it happens. But yeah, it's a really great tool to kind of see what other people are playing in their deck. Uh, there's also a way for you to actually copy the other person's deck. It, again, uh, it's a little bit extensive, so I'll actually make a separate video for that in the future. And I'll also show you guys how to make custom card sleeves and just how to customize the background. I'll do all that stuff. A lot of you guys asked me on that. Uh, and uh, I'll do an updated video on this because uh, a lot of you guys uh, asked me. And I made a video a long time ago, but I feel like that, that, that video definitely needs an update because of the new like background changes that have implemented into the game. Now, the next thing is actually one of the more important things, which is the deck edit section of the game. So you can see over here, there are separate ban lists. You don't always have to play what is the current ban list. Maybe you like to play in the OCG ban list. Maybe you like to play in traditional. Maybe you like the world ban list. Or maybe, heck, you don't even want to play a ban list. So you can be like, you know, I'm going to put in triple pot of greed uh, and uh, totally run you just a crazy ban deck. Hey, feel free to go ahead and do so. Now, most players, just as a heads up, will not play in those sections, but you can play. If you activate like triple pot of greeds, uh, some people will quit on you. Just keep that in mind. But uh, most people like to play uh, on the uh, normal ban list in the TCG or OCG. So these are the two most popular ones. But if you try doing some other like you know anime decks and stuff like that, uh, a lot of people will quit out on you. I'm just gonna give you guys like the heads up on that. Now, as far as saving a deck, you type in whatever you want. You can uh, save the deck, and it'll save it over here, and you can select whatever deck that you want. And, uh, yeah, it's again, it's all completely free. There's no, like, I know how Call of Duty is, like, you'll have a limited amount of, like, uh, class slots. There's no limits on this. You can have pretty much infinite. Uh, I don't know if, actually, I'm pretty sure you could, it'll, like, open up a scroll bar. I've never made so many decks that I had to scroll down on this. And, and on DevPro, it scrolls down on this little, like, Dropbox over here. But for the most part, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you want to delete a deck, obviously it's uh, self-explanatory. Now, there is a feature that I want to share with you guys that's really cool. It's called Shuffle. So what you can do with the Shuffle feature is you can actually test out, you know, a play test of the first five cards or five, six, uh, five to six cards that you draw. So you can shuffle it and you can get an idea of, you know, what you're going to draw into. But uh, most people like it uh, if you're giving a deck profile to actually click on Sort and that way you can see everything. Now, they have everything implemented that's really, really nice. You can go to Category, go to Monster, Spells, and Traps, and you guys can go ahead and see, like, you know, if I'm looking for a very specific spell uh, for a deck, and, like, if, if it says, like, add one Quick Play Spell card, you can be like, oh, okay, Quick Play Spell card. Now I'm going to go ahead and just search what are the good Quick Play Spell cards that I want to play uh, that can be searched out. Or if it's a if it's a spell card that it says add one Ritual Spell card from your deck to your hand, hey, you can go ahead and search off all of those, so it really helps out. Now, it gets a little bit uh, more in-depth when you go to monsters. So for the monsters, you have normal effects, ritual, synchro, flips. Uh, and then you have the attribute, then you have the type, then you have a level or rank. So uh, that can help you out with searching for the card. Now, you can also limit some of the searching. Uh, with this, you can change the attack and defense. And then you can obviously click search. So it can really help you find uh, out certain cards. Now, one excellent thing, uh, if you want to build, like, let's say, a zombie deck, uh, and it says, like, special summon one zombie type monster, you can not only go through this so um sometimes uh it's very rare um but there are cards that say zombie in the the, the title or, or it'll be in the card's text but they actually won't be a zombie so you can see over here like mizuki it's a zombie over here it gets to fuma over here if it says if it battles a fiend or a zombie type monster you get to destroy that monster at the end of damage step so we can also show you cards that can counter or support zombies because it might say like you can special summon a zombie from your graveyard even though the card isn't a zombie monster it still supports or technically could be an anti-support card or i should say a counter uh, to the zombie archetype. So this, this could be a great way for some of you uh, younger or newer players to look into other things. You don't always have to play the meta, sometimes you just want to have fun and you can look up some other crazy obscure cards. Like again, um, some of these cards you might not never have thought of playing in a deck and sometimes they can be kind of crazy, you know, good cards. Like for example, there's um, there's a, I think it's called Beast, yeah, Beast of the Pharaoh is a really interesting card that not that many people like play or uh, know about. If it's sent to the graveyard for a synchro, uh, someone of a uh, level 4 or a lower, uh, if this is sent to the graveyard for a synchro summon, you can spell someone at level 4 or lower zombie type monster from your graveyard. So there's a lot of other cards that a lot of meta players won't play, but you might like and you might want to try to add it into your deck. So you can definitely go ahead and do that. 
But uh, that's pretty much it for the deck edit. Um, and oh, just as a quick heads up, this is actually a really good tip. You can right click on the cards. You don't always have to drag the cards off to remove them. Right clicking them here or right clicking them here adds and removes them. So that can be really helpful. And uh, you can just drag to the side deck and stuff like that. But yeah, it just really, it's just so much more helpful just to be able to right click to remove or right click to add. It makes things so much faster. And I'm not going to save this because it's not really relevant. But then the last thing is exit, and that's going to exit you out of the game. Now, uh, there's your tutorial for the game as far as how to download it and how to, you know, get the brief rundown of the game. And a little quick little tutorial. If you guys felt like I missed out on anything, let me know down below in the comment section below and I'll update you guys on a video on that in the future. But have some fun with the game, guys. And yeah, like I said, it's completely free. One of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling applications uh, in the market right now. Oh, I, should, well, I shouldn't even say market because I'm exactly like it's... It, and uh, for those of you guys, I don't know, for whatever reason you guys think I get paid to make these videos, I do not get paid at all to uh, promote a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro or Dev Pro. These are all free applications. If you want to support them, they do have other ways so you can support them um, via like donations essentially, but uh, they don't affect the game just as a heads up. They're like other card sleeves or you can change some of the colors of the text, but uh, that's on Dev Pro's end. But uh, yeah, this whole game is completely free. All the cards and updates are completely free. This is made by the fans for the fans so really great application how's the fun with it guys and like i said if you guys feel like i missed out on anything let me know and i can maybe make like a part two or like any uh, other uh videos to kind of help you out with other things and again i'll make a video showing you guys how to get the hd custom cards and how to get like um custom like attacks and like a lot, a lot of the customization stuff i'll make a video for that in the future but uh yeah have fun with Yu-Gi-Oh pro guys but thanks for watching guys and i'm signing out